Merry Christmas from Naples United Church of Christ in Naples, Florida. My name is Dawson Taylor and I have the privilege of serving as senior minister. And no matter if you're joining us via live stream, Facebook Live, or if you have downloaded our podcast, we're grateful to have you worshiping with us and celebrating this, the holiest of nights in the Christian tradition, our annual Christmas Eve celebration. We are celebrating Christmas Eve in a variety of ways, even despite being socially distanced this year. And so we are grateful to have you in this, our traditional service. I do wanna invite you back on Sunday, December 27th at 10 a.m. We will be back for another Sunday of worship. And so we hope that you will join us. During this time of worship, you will be invited to give as a part of our offering. As is also the custom of this church, all money received goes out the door. And so you're invited to give for this year's offering, which goes to the pension boards and ministerial assistance support. This fund supports retired clergy, lay workers who have served the church, as well as those who are in a time of need. It has been a great source of pride for this congregation to lead that offering and lead the denomination in giving for the last 13 years. And so it is my hope and prayer that you will continue to be generous. There will be a link that will take you directly there from the bulletin that you can download, or you can always call the church office, send a check, and we are happy to add that to the offering. So thank you in advance for your generosity. As I mentioned, we have a tradition in this congregation of having a series of Christmas Eve services. And so I do wanna let you know that we have a family-oriented Christmas service that is more geared to children and to their understanding levels and their attention spans. And it's available to watch on demand at our website at www.naplesucc.org. You know, 2020 has been a year that has left many of us wondering what the Christmas message could possibly mean or where God could actually be at work among us. And so I'm grateful that you are here to once again hear beautiful music, to hear words of promise from scripture, and to hear from me where it is that I see God at work among you. And so it is a privilege to wish you a Merry Christmas and to welcome you to this beautiful service.
God is telling a story in our lives. It's quite a story, full of the promises God makes and our struggles to trust, full of mystery and angels with surprising news. Come, hear the story. Pay attention to the angel's message in your heart, in this place and time. Then join all creation in worshiping the God who tells it, full of grace and truth, who comes in Jesus, the Word made flesh and makes our story holy. prophet announces a new time of righteousness. Hear these words from Isaiah 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. 
The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
the one who is coming who will grant us peace. Hear these words from Isaiah chapter 11. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea.
the angel Gabriel salutes Mary. Hear these words from Luke 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. Hear these words from Luke 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn.
the shepherds go to the manger. Hear these words from Luke chapter 2. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. My four, soon-to-be-five-year-old niece, Catherine Wright, is enamored with Jesus. She is precocious, adorable, and can pretty much wrap anyone around her little finger within an instant. From restaurant servers to federal judges, I have seen my niece work a room better than a seasoned politician. She is cute, and she knows it. But Catherine Wright is enamored with Jesus. 
please hear me, I acknowledge there are certainly worse things that an adoring uncle could say about one of his nieces or nephews. But of all the things that she could obsess over, I will admit, this has surprised me. Now, in my seven years of calling Naples home, many of you have gotten to know my family and the generations of pastors that are part of my lineage. That might lead some of you to think, now come on, Dawson, both of her uncles, her grandfather, her great uncle, and her great aunt are all pastors. You cannot be surprised that she is enamored with religion. But hear me clearly. I did not say that Catherine Wright is enamored with religion. I said that Catherine Wright is enamored with Jesus. My precocious, adorable, four, soon-to-be-five-year-old niece, who can wrap anyone around her little finger, has learned quickly the place to find Jesus when you are looking for him in your PJ and Gigi's home your maternal grandparents' house. If you go into the guest bedroom that is just beyond your PJ's study, the guest bedroom, where your Uncle Dawson normally stays when he comes for a visit, there in that room is an antique secretary with a shelf low enough that a four, almost five-year-old is able to reach. On that shelf, is a nativity scene. That nativity scene is made from olive wood and was crafted in the Holy Land. It was a Christmas gift to my parents from a bishop whose cabinet my father served on. Perhaps because of the beauty of the carving, perhaps because it sits out all year, perhaps because it is from the holiest of lands of the three Abrahamic faiths. There's this mystique about it. The Joseph figurine is slightly taller than Mary. It includes a donkey and two sheep with a shepherd to the left and three small wise ones off to the right. And of course, at the very center of it all, resting in a small rough crush, is a baby Jesus. And that is where Catherine Wright's obsession comes in. On a visit to see her grandparents, she had had a, an enjoyable day playing with her brother and generally being spoiled, as grandparents do. My parents were getting ready to load them into their car for transportation back to their parents. This, of course, included lots of straightening of toys. And when the tasks were complete... But before heading into the garage to begin the journey from the suburbs into the city, Catherine Wright darted into the front guest room. You know, the one just off of her PJ's study. When she returned, she had this sheepish grin on her face and, and her arms behind her back. When her grandfather asked what she was doing, she responded, nothing. When he interrogated more thoroughly, she asked him to guess. Knowing that Catherine Wright is enamored with Jesus and knowing what that guest room held, my father asked Catherine Wright if she was trying to steal Jesus. She smiled her wide, adorable smile, confessed her attempted crime and returned Jesus to his proper place in the nativity scene. I mean, can you imagine a beautiful nativity scene without Jesus? But on this Christmas, on this particular year, perhaps your imaginings are deeper than that. Now that we have arrived to Christmas Eve, perhaps you feel that someone has stolen Christmas from you. Or perhaps you feel that someone has stolen the joy of the season or the potential that 2020 held for you. 
it is likely tied in one way or another to the global pandemic that we are living through. But if we are honest, with now more than over 300,000 Americans that have not lived through the pandemic. We see hospitals and intensive care units across our nation approaching capacity. This congregation has not worshiped together in person since March 15th. Never could I have imagined a year in local church ministry where I would not celebrate Easter or Christmas with my congregation. It's not as if someone stole Jesus, but it's as if someone stole five years of graduate level education and countless hours of continuing education, threw it out the window and said, here, start over. It's not as if someone stole Jesus, but it's as if someone said to the bride and groom whose wedding that I was due to officiate last weekend, who had to change their wedding date due to a COVID scare. Here, put your happiness and future on hold. It's not as if someone stole Jesus, but it's as if someone said to the church member who fought COVID valiantly, but decided that they had had enough and called their family in to say goodbye, but then rallied and is now slowly on the mend. It's as if someone said, put all of your fears here. Never in my life have I seen such political and social division. I have never lived in a time when everything I do feels like a major decision. From if I will eat at a restaurant indoors to whether to see family at the holidays. It's like my friend who declared recently that they will not be adding this year to their age because it feels that they've not actually had a chance to live. But we have also seen some of the best parts of humanity this year, haven't we? Have we not seen nurses who have sat by patients' bedsides to fulfill the obligations of family who could not be there? Have we not seen doctors work endless shifts so that patients would have all the care and resources at their disposal? Have we not seen brave souls who have volunteered for vaccine trials so that we could develop a vaccine in record time? Have we not seen retired professors return to classrooms to ensure that doctors and nurses of the future have adequate training? Have we not seen an outpouring of generosity to churches and nonprofits to ensure that all can eat and that all will have enough? Have we not seen families make difficult decisions about being apart for holidays working to manage the possibility of further outbreak. You see, no one has stolen Jesus, and no one has actually stolen Christmas. No one has stolen hope, peace, joy, and love. What if 2020 turns out to be a year when we look back and ponder anew that who we are to the core shone through most bright. The people that first Christmas were waiting for a Messiah. They were waiting for good news of great joy. Like us, they were waiting for their world, as they understood it, to change and to be turned on its head. They were waiting for a mighty warrior to come as the Messiah. Instead, it was a vulnerable child born in a foreign land who would become who they needed most. But maybe... 
just maybe, that is who we need most this Christmas. So here is my prayer for each of us. Every time you see a nativity scene, the deep longing of my heart is that when you see the baby Jesus nestled there in the center of it all, that you will know at the very core of your soul that no one has stolen Christmas this year. May that assurance and may that peace be with you this night and always. Merry Christmas. When I was a young pastor, I was surrounded by many rural pastors who served small churches that didn't always have the resources to provide a pension to those who ministered faithfully year after year. Each year, Naples United Church of Christ participates in the UCC Christmas Fund, offering an expression of appreciation to those who served, who are now retired or disabled or financially stressed all over the United States. Would you pray with me now? Eternal God, you have blessed us abundantly with your gifts. Enable us then to bless others out of our resources. Bless these gifts of compassion and gratitude for those obedient to you in their time of leadership and now in their time of need. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Doom, but on that night for him there was.
John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. With glowing hearts by his cradle we 
my friends, no one has stolen Christmas. God is with us. Emmanuel. Merry Christmas.